All right, we have made it to day three in our exploration, our seven days of shadow. I hope that you are doing well and being really nurturing to yourself as we go through this because it's really, really important to not just do the kind of bullshit self-care, you know, like a little bubble bath is wonderful, but this work is really about looking at the parts of ourselves that we've kept hidden from ourselves and the parts of ourselves that we've kept hidden from the world and we've kept them hidden for good reason. Sometimes we feel like it's incredibly unsafe or it can cause incredible harm to bring these parts of ourselves forward and that's part of what we're doing in the dismantling. Integrating the shadow is actually the key to freedom, that we cannot be free if we're busy protecting ourselves from something about ourselves that we are disliking or judging or shaming. There's no way that we can be in emotionally exclusive, intimate relationships with people. There's no way that we can actually manifest at our highest level of potential if we're walking around with so much shame and trauma that we don't know how to integrate. And it's a big task, it's a big journey. It's not a task that we are going to accomplish in seven days. But there's an opportunity to at least start looking at some of these areas, how they show up and how we can bring a little bit of grace, a little bit of compassion and a lot of love to these areas in our body. So I would love for you to take a deep breath on this one. We mentioned this one on day one when we talked about the victim. This one is a hard one to look at. And so we, with love and compassion, we are going to look at the part of ourselves that is the out of balance part of our ego that we are going to frame as the perpetrator energy. To be clear, even those of us who love to live in victim and would prefer for people to feel sorry for us than take um, the responsibility of being a perpetrator, all of us have this energy inside of us to some degree. And it is not something to condemn ourselves for because the condemning of it, the, the throwing it in the basement and pretending it's not there actually causes tremendous harm unconsciously. Sometimes we can get passive aggressive. Sometimes we can get into microaggression. We can cause harm that we're not even aware that we're causing. And again, uh, something that comes up when we don't want to face the perpetrator in us and we don't want to integrate that part of our shadow is that we can say, but I didn't mean to. My intention wasn't to cause harm. And again, the intention doesn't matter. The impact is what matters. And many of us are so afraid of perpetrating outside of us that we actually internalize the energy and we get deep, deep into self perpetration where we are so mean to ourselves, so hard on ourselves, so creating so much separateness with ourselves. We're often punishing ourselves into being better. We're often telling ourselves, you're so fat, you're so ugly, you're so untalented, you're so stupid. From this place, be better, be more, fix yourself, change yourself. And we somehow think that that what we call dirty fuel of motivating ourselves in opposition to our own selves is going to actually create a stronger person that's going to create a more loved and loving person. We think that's going to create a more holistic person. We think that's going to create a more confident person. But confidence isn't created through the overcoming of insecurity, arrogances. And if we want to truly step into healthy ego, healthy autonomy, healthy interdependence, healthy levels of confidence, we can't motivate ourselves through overcoming the negativity and the darkness that we hate about ourselves. We motivate ourselves by knowing ourselves as fundamentally good. And when we see the parts of ourselves that look bad and ugly, we bring them to the light. We acknowledge them and we say, okay, I see this part of you, and this is a part that needs healing. This is a part that needs love. This is a part that needs nurturing, not a part that needs shaming. We don't need any more separation because that's actually the thing that causes the split, that causes us to sabotage ourselves, to not think we're worthy, to not think we're lovable. That's the part that actually holds us back. So one of the key ways that we can heal ourselves is saying, I am willing to look at the parts of myself that are oppressive. I'm willing to look at the parts of myself that hurt. I'm willing to look at the parts of myself that are mean, that are self-serving. 
I'm willing to look at those parts as something that wants healing and wants love. That perhaps in the family I grew up in or the world that I grew up in, when those parts of myself got revealed, I got severely punished or I got abandoned or I got beaten or I got shamed. And so I learned, it became normalized for me to treat myself that way when those parts of myself come up. And if I normalize that in the way I treat myself, then on some level, it is now normalized in my behavior, in my DNA, in the code of who I am. It is now normal to then consciously or unconsciously treat someone else that exact same way. And so this healing is a really deep and a really important one that I have to commit to what the yogis call ahimsa, kindness. And I have to extend that kindness even to the parts of myself that I don't like. Kindness, not in terms of bypassing it, ignoring it, making acceptable what isn't acceptable. Kindness in terms of this is a part that needs deep love. This is a part of me that was wounded, that needs healing. And I can't heal it if I'm not willing to look at it and if I'm pretending it's not there. And so there's a bully in all of us that is constantly pounding away at our self-esteem. And that bully can sound critical, it can sound controlling, it can sound angry, authoritarian, it can sound judgmental, it can be the thing that's enforcing rules or rigid standards of how you have to be, what you have to eat, how little you have to eat, you know, what, how much you have to work out, all these things. It can have this feeling of it's superior or better than you and you can't ever live up to it. It can threaten you, bully you. This is a part of you treating you this way, which can get treated outside of you this way if you normalize it. Usually this part of yourself has built after it's been deeply disappointed by others and it's resentful. It loves to use self-abandonment as motivation. I'm gonna take away my love if you don't act the way I want you to. And it's abusive to you. It causes you to push yourself too hard. It causes you to self-harm. And the perpetrator in us can show up in very conscious ways and very unconscious ways. So I remember when I was in the 10th grade and it was the first time I ever got cast in a play. And I think it was the happiest I had ever been in my life. It was the first time I had really discovered doing any kind of art or, or acting outside of just like with my cousins or with my friends or make believe at home. It was the first time that it turned into a professional gig where I was getting paid money and I had a rehearsal schedule. And um, it was such a big moment in my life. And I was so happy about it and so proud of it. And also felt so guilty that I got to do this thing that I love when other people in my life maybe didn't get to do what they love. Or there was so many complicated feelings about what this would mean, who I would become. If I went down this path, that meant I was not gonna go down the path of being a doctor or whatever it was that I think my family had hoped that I would be. And so there became this split in me where the further I walked down the road of being an artist, which was the thing I really wanted to do that made me feel really good, it was the same moment in my life where I started self-harming and pulling my own hair out. And I got to the point, and still I'm at the point, to be totally honest with you, where when the stress, the anxiety, the sabotage gets so big, I'll have these little patches where there's little places where I have to comb my hair a certain way where you won't see where I pulled it out. And so the perpetrator in me that wants to punish me for putting what lights me up first, that's somewhere deep inside myself, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to put yourself first. That's called being selfish. And if you were raised in any kind of system of martyrdom or you know, that kind of um, religious upbringing that you, know, you have to suffer your way and you can't actually do what makes you happy, then you have to rebel against that and sometimes that leads to a self perpetration which it did in my life and so maybe you can get present to ways in your life where you've reached that glass ceiling of how high you're allowed to go and how you've punished 
shamed, sabotaged, or hurt yourself in order to make sure you didn't go any further. So when we look at self-perpetration, we also want to look at when we allow this kind of energy in our life, then we become a magnet for people in our life that we will want to judge or fix or think we're educating or making better. You'll see how it's so easy all of a sudden to even look at your family of origin or your partner and say, oh, this is what's wrong with them. Like I become the judge and jury for knowing what's best. And then I'm going to educate someone else on what their issue is. That's a form of perpetration. And so when we get really present to this, like what is the payoff of being a perpetrator? Because it doesn't sound that glamorous. It doesn't sound like something any of us want to be, but, but we don this, we don this persona. We, we take this on, we take this shadow on. We feel sometimes that we beat people to the punch. If I'm mean enough to myself, if I tell myself how worthless I am, if I tell myself what a bad actor I am, then when I don't get that call or I don't get that booking or that agent breaks up with me, then it's like, see, see, it's just reinforcing what I already knew. I feel like it's gonna uh, make it better or easier because I've already told myself this. We also feel like we motivate ourselves this way. If I tell myself how fat and ugly and horrible I am, that's gonna be the thing that's gonna make me put on my running shoes and go out for that run or go out for that workout. We think it's motivating. We think it's gonna push us and move us to be mean to ourselves. We also get to feel superior and like we have some false sense of power when we're busy having opinions about other people, when we're busy saying, well, that person only booked that or that person only did that. When, when we're busy trying to make ourselves feel above, there's a sense of not having to feel our own insecurity. So when we want to integrate this part of ourselves, we want to bring in the part of ourself that is so scared and so insecure and feels so less than that it would rather be a perpetrator than face that part of ourselves. So healing the perpetrator is healing the deep insecurity and the wounds that are, arose out of and healing the part in ourself that thinks it has to be better than and thinks that that's the only way. So I would just invite you to take a deep breath because this is not an easy conversation. So let's just take a breath together. And hold that breath at the top and swallow saliva and pull your belly in and hold a little bit more and then exhale when you need to and then just hold at the bottom hold in emptiness and then when you need to just breathe in and breathe out And know that every single time you let that inner critic, that inner judge, that inner perpetrator belittle you, put you down, or belittle or put someone else down, you move further and further away from your authentic truth. And you move further and further away from your talent and your artistry. And it's too big a price to pay. And so if your eyes aren't already closed, I invite you to bring them to close. I invite you to get very present, maybe all the way down into your gut, or maybe deep inside the critical mind, wherever it lives for you. I would like for you to connect with the part inside of yourself that is so mean to you. Connect with what the energy of that inner perpetrator is. And it might feel like a puff of smoke or some sort of angry looking cartoon character. It might look exactly like you. It might be an animal or an energy or a color. But connect to the part of you that feels the need to harm you. And can you see that underneath this big mask of this monster is actually this deeply 
wounded, insecure place? And can you see this big bad perpetrator as if it's taking off its costume? And can you see the scared, insecure, lonely space that resides within it? this part of yourself and when you connect to this part of yourself can you bring it in tight and close maybe even holding it or crying with it or embracing it hatred and judgment isn't who you are it's just what you learned seeing that scared, insecure, sad, lost energy underneath, can you give it your compassion? Can you look right at it and say, I promise the next time I hear you being mean to me, the next time I hear you beating up on me, the next time I hear you yelling at someone unnecessarily and taking out all of this fear on the world or on me, I promise to know and see you as this scared, lost energy and I will love you. And I will keep loving you. You cannot be mean enough to push me away because I will love you. I see you and I love you anyway. As you allow yourself to find this new connection with this new part of you. Can you ask this insecurity what it's really scared of and what it really needs? How it needs to be loved? what all the fuss is about. When it tells you you're stupid or too much or not talented, what's that really about? Be brave enough to meet it and to hear it so you can heal it. And tell this part of you, this inner perpetrator, what you want to hear instead. Instead of I'm not enough, instead of I'm too fat, instead of I'm not talented, instead of I'm gonna mess it up, what do you wanna hear instead? What would be truly motivating and helpful and healing? What dialogue actually feels healthy and positive that you can both agree on?
allowing yourselves, you and this insecure perpetrator inside of you to make a pact. We will no longer motivate through negativity. And if I catch you doing it, I will say no. No thank you. No more. Allow yourself to embrace this part of yourself. Bring it all the way into yourself. Allow it to merge within you like a wisp of smoke that starts to disappear and dissipate. And as you do, you start to feel yourself arriving once more back in your body, back in the space, back in the quiet. Whenever you're ready, taking a very soothing and deep, full breath all the way in. Hold it at the top. Feel the spaciousness, possibility. Exhale when you're ready <sighs> and let everything go. And hold at the bottom, empty knowing that something new and wonderful can fill the space. And inhale when you're ready. And exhale to open your eyes. So the commitment moving forward in the healing of this relationship with the part of yourself that wants to be mean and bully and beat up on yourself is making the commitment when you hear that inner critic, when you hear that negativity, to take on the Tony Robbins game where when he hears his own negative voice inside, he stops what he's doing and he says, I decide. I decide. I'm not listening to that. Something else. And so like a puppy, you get to retrain that part of yourself that thinks it has to be mean to you to help you grow. And you say, no, I don't grow that way. I grow with water and sunlight and nurturing and love. So when I hear you giving me things that feel poisonous, like Dr. Emoto's experiments with the water, when he said beautiful positive things to the water or played beautiful music for the water and they grew these beautiful crystal formations. And when he yelled at the water and said you're a fool or mean horrible things to the water or played aggressive music, the water turned murky and dull in the same way what we tell ourselves changes who we get to be. And so the commitment moving forward is when you hear that inner critic, when you hear the perpetrator, no, no thank you. What else you got? And this way we can start to integrate and say, I see you, I'm not making you wrong for saying it, but it doesn't work for me. And I have strong boundaries with the energy that doesn't feel good inside of myself with the energy I put out in the world.